Hey nerds, I am breaking down another episode of Only Murders in Building. This week's episode, the stuntman takes us deeper into Zaz's life and the trio's investigation leads them outside the Arconia. But does the episode keep the mystery going or does it leave us with more questions than answers? Let's dive into it right now. Welcome back to the Nerd Social, I'm Nathan. As always, if you want to jump ahead of this intro to my analysis or rating, see the chapter links below. So this is the fourth episode of season four and it will be posted on September 17th. The investigation takes a turn as the trio ventures into new territory. And of course we meet some new quirky characters. So let's see what worked and what didn't in The Stuntman. So the spoiler free logline for this episode is in The Stuntman, Charles, Oliver and Mabel dive into the world of stunt performers as they investigate a suspect tied to Zaz's past uncovering more clues while wrestling with new mysteries. All right, let's break down this episode. Spoilers ahead. So the title of this episode is a movie title just like the previous episodes. The Stuntman, a movie released in 1980, is a dark comedy drama, an action film starring Peter O'Toole, Steve Railsback and Barbara Hershing, directed by Richard Rash, based on a novel by Paul Broder. The movie is known for its complex blend of psychological drama, satire, and action, exploring the blurred lines between reality and illusion in filmmaking. This is far more straightforward this week because we're delving into Zaz's uh, life as a stunt. A stuntman. And the first scene of this episode, Charles is walking through a grayscale forest following his stunt double Zaz, who was killed, as you know. There's a red spot as it was Zaz was shot, contrasting with the grayscale. She says they're heading to paradise as a voiceover by Glem Stubbins, who we meet later on, talks about stunt doubles. The red spot highlighting Zaz's death in Charles's dream suggests some unresolved guilt, or perhaps is foreshadowing some key detail of the murder that we're unaware. In the next scene in Charles's apartment in the morning, Charles reveals that he's created a second murder board dedicated to Zaz. They discuss Zaz being a ham radio a hobbyist and a potential target. Oliver feels hired after a call of Loretta, revealing concerns about a mysterious man appearing in her Instagram post. The group decide to investigate further at concussions, a bar Zaz was last seen at. Zaz's mysterious connection to the West Tower is a key element in this episode, as is Oliver's suspicion uh, uh, about the mystery himbo in Loretta's uh, Instagram photos. Then we jump over to the West Tower apartments. Mabel is squatting in the West Tower and Howard asks to help with his podcast about animals. But Mabel is focused on the case and asks him to sit with the hopes of catching Dudinoff because she doesn't think that Dudinoff is actually in Portugal, which will of course cause some tension later on in the episode. Later on the elevator, the trio head to concussions to investigate. Oliver reveals that he's been using a fake Instagram account or a Finsta to spy on Loretta. He jokes in the elevator about Ronnie, the alter ego, Oliver's fictional avatar. At the bar concussions, the stuntman bar, the trio are unwelcome by the bar patrons upset that can't give Zaz a stuntman's funeral because there's no body and thinking the trio is trying to profit off her death. They also meet Glenn Stubbins, Gilroy's stunt double who resembles Ben. Glenn blames the feckers for Ben's death and they notice a purple light in the back room which is the same as the one in Zaz's Instagram photo the day of her death. If you didn't catch my review and there's a link above if you need to check it out. This is the character I was alluding to that I didn't really like. Yeah, Glenn's character was definitely a miss for me. Paul Rudd's Irish accent is terrible which I guess is as part of the joke and I like Rudd but I question the wisdom of the decision to bring an actor back as a different character in the season following the season his previous character was killed off so anyway outside the bar in the next scene Glenn pleads with Charles to help him find work and Charles and Mabel convince Glenn to tell them about Dr. Maggie who he describes as an exorcist for stuntman she's a chiropractor Charles wants to investigate Dr. Maggie alone feeling guilty about Zaz's death yeah and uh, didn't mention this before, but Glenn is obviously crazy. Back at the Iconia, Howard is alone in Mabel's apartment and someone slips a flyer underneath the door for the Owner Murders movie, leading to his decision to leave the apartment. In the next scene, he's auditioning in the East Tower. Howard auditions for a role in the movie adaptation of the podcast, but doesn't get the part. The brothers take him under their wing to nurture him. Back at Dr. Mackey's office in the back of the bar, Charles gets an adjustment by a 
Dr. Maggie, who suggests that Zaz was in pain a lot and she was planning to retire due to a difficult relationship. This uh, could be another clue. It could just be pointing to Zaz's relationship with Charles, which is what Charles assumes it could be talking about Jan, or it could be talking about someone else. In the next scene at Oliver's apartment, Oliver continues obsessing over Loretta and confesses that he almost proposed to her in LA, but didn't do to fear. Howard also comes in and puts his job as apartment sitter and gives Mabel the pig back and then takes it away from her again. This has nothing to do with the investigation, but it deepens all for a little bit. Back at Dr. Maggie's office, while being adjusted, Charles has another dream of Zaz, this time referencing paradise again and talking about getting away. And there are more bloodstains all over her body, not just the bullet wound that killed her, but all the injuries that she took on being his stump double. The next scene, Mabel goes to the West Tower and she confronts the Westies, who she previously in the episode said that might be a cult, and discovers they are running a rent control apartment scam. So they're not a cult. So this seemingly has no direct connection to Zaz's death, but it clears up some suspicion about the group. Maybe, if they can be believed. I'm also very unclear about Anna's age in this episode. I thought she was a teenager, but she says that she's an adult here, and no one really questions her about this. I don't know if that's important, but something to put a pen in. Then we go over to Charles's apartment, where the three is playing Oh Hell, the card game. Mabel explains the Westies rent scheme. Oliver frets over Loretta's mystery man and Charles reflects on Zaz's sacrifices. Mabel deletes Oliver's finsta for him and Charles feels the need to do something for Zaz, leading him to take on her role in her funeral. Later at the bar, Charles participates in the stuntman's funeral for Zaz laying on the pool table. The stuntmen share memories of Zaz and break stunt bottles over Charles's head. Glenn accidentally knocks Charles unconscious with a real bottle, so this funeral provides some insight into Zaz's life and relationships with other stunt people, suggesting that there definitely is more to her story. Charles, once unconscious, has, instead of a dream, a flashback. Charles remembers a conversation with Zaz about opening a stunt training school. This paradise was her dream located in Paradise, New Jersey. When the next scene, the trio visit the location of Zaz's dream stunt academy, they find a shed and as they investigate, they encounter Bev Mellon, the Paramount producer who threatens them with a gun. At the end of this episode, we have some unresolved things. So if we still don't know, of course, who killed Zaz. Zaz's mystery connection to the West Tower remains unexplained. The mysterious events at the lot and Bev Mellon's involvement remain unanswered and to a lesser extent unrelated to the murder, Loretta's relationship with the mystery armed man is unresolved. Things that are possibly resolved here, the Westies are not a cult, but are involved in a rent control scheme, if they're to be believed. Professor Dudinoff is in Portugal, according to them, if they're to be believed. The voice in the radio, it turns out, is Helga, Rudy's ex-girlfriend, not directly related to the case. Again, out there to be, be, to be believed. She's just talking about the last person who was asking questions where was killed, and they say that she's never met Zaz. And of course, Zaz's paradise, which was a clue earlier on in this episode, was the Stunt Academy in New Jersey. So, what did you think of the stuntman? Did the new characters work for you, or were there some misses? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth analysis of film and TV. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.